On this episode of Eat Sleep Drive, we are reviewing this beast of a jet. This is the Daytona 3-ton from Harbor Freight. And we're gonna review it, and I'm gonna let you know if it's any good. Can, can I put it down now? <laughs> oh, thank God. That thing, we will get into the review, but the first thing I'm gonna say is it's heavy as hell. Things over 100 pounds, but welcome to another episode of Eat Sleep Drive, guys. I figured I would do a review on this Daytona jack today. I've been using this little aluminum racing jack, which is so nice that I can just throw this thing around. But now that I bought my Toyota Land Cruiser, I need something a little more substantial because that little jack is not going to cut it. Enter this jack. These things are being made, well, being sold by Harbor Freight now. I really think that they're probably not making much money on these jacks because as I look at it and as we'll get into, I think it's a lot of jack for the money. So what we're gonna do here today is basically dive into this jack. I'm gonna show you guys all the features, all the specifications, how low it goes, how high it goes, all that kind of stuff. And then we're gonna jack up my GT350 here to see um, you know, its low profile capability. This is the lowest car I have. And then we'll bring in my Land Cruiser. I'll get this out of here. We'll bring in my Land Cruiser. We'll jack that up to see how it compares. And then, you know, I'm just going to give you guys details on, along the way of things that I've observed with this jack and whether or not it makes sense for you to buy. Now, I'm in no way affiliated with Harbor Freight. I bought this with my own money. It was $189 at Harbor Freight, and I think that's a pretty good deal for what you get. So what do you get with this jack? Well, it has a three-ton capacity, which isn't anything special. There's a lot of jacks that can uh, jack up more than that for cheaper, but I guess the big selling point with this thing is not only that it's a three ton, but that it's super low profile and has a long reach. They have about three or four different models in this Daytona brand. And the big difference is how high they can lift, how low they are, and how long they can extend. The other ones are a little bit shorter lengthwise, so they can't quite get as far under the car. It sort of depends what your car is like as to which one you need. They say it has, and I'll get the tape measure, a three and a quarter inch minimum height. And it's actually maybe three inches, we'll call it three inches, but it's actually three and a half inches, a little bit closer back here. So this kind of tapers back. That's one thing to keep in mind. They claim three and a quarter inch, which I guess it is right here. But if you need to clear three and a half inches, sort of like right at the sill where the rocker starts, uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. 24 inch lift height, which is uh, pretty huge. There was a cheaper model, a little bit smaller than this, it had three ton capacity, it was $129 but it could only lift like 19 or 20 inches. For you know a car like this, I think that would be more than sufficient, but for my Land Cruiser, that's obviously a lot significantly higher than this. I think it makes more sense to get something with a higher lift. As far as the distance between where the jack starts and where it tapers up over here, it's about 18 inches or so. So it's kind of got, in my opinion, 18 inches of reach under the car before you start running into height issues, which is something that would happen here. But uh, 18 inches is more than enough for this thing. And another thing I really like about it is this step jack. I mean, look how quickly you can jack this thing up just by stepping on it. Now, obviously you can't <laughs> jack the entire car up by just stepping on it, but on a thing, on something like my Land Cruiser, that's high in the air as you don't want to just like pump it all the way up because that takes forever. I mean, not really too bad to be honest, as far as a big jack goes, but it's obviously way quicker to use the step jack. So that's a nice feature. And then the other ones that I were looking at didn't have that. This isn't, uh, they had one that was comparable to a Snap-on product and that was yellow. And the reason I didn't get that one is it wasn't quite as low profile. I like this design a little bit better, but overall the quality is really nice and I'll show you guys close-ups of the finish. I mean, for something from Harbor Freight, I think that they're trying to get rid of that image of just selling cheap products and I think they are maybe, I, I don't want to say they're taking a loss with these jacks, but I don't really think they're making much money, but you know, trying to improve their brand image. They, it has a jack pad here that rotates, which is really nice. Doesn't really seem like a big deal until 
if you've ever jacked up a car and you kind of need to scooch the jack over to get a jack stand under it, it's actually a really nice feature. It's nice and flat. It's uh, some sort of rubber or plastic, so it's soft and hopefully shouldn't mar up your frame rails. This handle is absolutely massive. It's about 47 and a half inches long. And that doesn't include the little bit that's in here. So close to 48 inches long. Lots of leverage, black coating. I like the fact that it has foam here. So if you, you know, kind of run it into your car, it's not gonna be a huge deal. And I'll be honest, I love the orange. The orange looks really good. Uh, not exactly a selling point for me, but it's a, it's a nice bonus in my opinion. Enough talking about the jack, let's see it in action. I've put it under the car here, and as you can see, it's right up to the limit of where it could be. I have about maybe a quarter to half an inch of clearance between the side skirt and my jack and my GT350. And I'll show you guys underneath, it's actually right under the frame rail. So if you wanna jack off the frame rail, this is really nice to have this extra reach. That cheaper jack that I would've bought or that I thought about buying, never ever would've been able to reach all the way in. This has that long reach. That's why uh, the part number is LR. But otherwise I would be stuck jacking off of the pinch weld, which is fine too, but I just prefer to jack off the frame rail because sometimes the pinch weld gets pinched or marred up. So let's, uh, let's jack this thing up. It's a nice big handle, so it's pretty easy to jack up. No effort really, but uh, definitely takes quite a bit of time. It's not a quick jack in that sense. It takes a bunch of jacks, but overall, I mean, it's really easy. I don't need to go like ridiculously high with this thing. If I'd want to put this at 24 inches of max height, I would have to probably go around, jack this up to a point where I can get a jack stand under it uh, that's a lot shorter, go, go over to the other side, jack that side up, and kind of do it in increments. You would never want to just jack the car up 24 inches on one side and then go on the other side. That would be super sketchy. Overall, I like it. I'm really glad that, like I said, I was really worried that with this clearance, it wasn't going to be able to clear the side skirt, but on my GT350, in this specific case, it works really well. So let's put this thing down. I'll move the GT350 out of the way and then we could get the Land Cruiser in and then try that one. Okay, now we have a much different beast. This thing is so ominous in this garage, I can barely fit it in here. A lot different than the GT350, which is a big car on its own. But as you can see, this is about 16 inches already off the ground compared to the five inches that my GT350 was. So we're gonna have to have much more extens extension on our jack. And I think that 24 inches of max travel 24 and a quarter, I should say. And as guys, we all know every quarter inch counts, right? Should come in pretty handy here. Let's find out. I mean, this is a heavy vehicle and outside of like this really long <laughs> handle and long stroke with the handle, it's, uh, it's not difficult at all to jack up. Let's see how high we can get it. It might be maxed. Nope, still going. Yeah, that's maxed. Okay. It's like kind of scary looking. Yeah, 24 and a quarter. I'd say that's a pretty fair assessment. And uh, that's plenty high. Definitely plenty of room to get under here, even on an SUV. So that's pretty nice. Obviously, we'll see how it holds up long term. I'll make sure that I update this video. If I have any issues, I'll make sure to put them in the comments below. Overall, my impressions for this jack, I'm quite impressed for the money. $189 for a high quality jack like this, and, uh, and it's orange, so it looks cool. So overall, it's a buy in my book if you guys are looking at jacks. Like I said earlier, they have a couple in this design, so get one that suits your needs. If you don't need this much lift, if you don't have an SUV, you might not need 24 inches of extension, but 
I do like the long reach capability of this thing. Yeah, get whatever uh, makes sense for you, but for me, 189 bucks, it's a no brainer. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I appreciate you guys watching. If you wanna follow me in between episodes, you can check me out on Instagram at eatsleepdrivetv. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you guys next time. See ya.